In this video, I'd like to talk to you about another set of permissions that you can apply to your users and your roles in your AWS account. In addition to IAM policies, we have something else called IAM permission boundaries. Now, IAM permission boundaries enable you to determine the maximum level of permissions that an individual user or an IAM role can have within an AWS account. And one of the key benefits of using permission boundaries is the ability to prevent privilege escalations where IAM users may circumvent certain loopholes within the IAM policy configurations and give themselves more permissions than they should be having. Let's talk about this in this hands-on demonstration. Okay, so let's take a look at a scenario. Let's talk about our friend Bob. Now, Bob is a member of the developers group, which essentially means that he's got access to certain resources and services. Specifically, a policy is being applied to the developers group that gives him full access to Amazon S3, CloudWatch, and IAM. This ultimately means that he's got full access to Amazon S3 service. He can create buckets, delete buckets, and all that stuff. He can also access Amazon CloudWatch, and he can access the IAM service, the Identity and Access Management service. Now, it so happens that Bob decides that he needs access to Amazon EC2 for a particular personal project. And because his policy doesn't grant him that level of access, any attempts to access EC2 are denied. Bob really does need to get onto EC2 and work on this project, so he decides that he's going to make a request to the security team to give him that level of access. And here's a chat extract of his communications with the security team. It would appear that two days ago he made the request for EC2 access and a ticket was raised to that effect. It's been two days and Bob is beginning to get a little bit frustrated. He still doesn't have access to EC2. He mentions to the security team that obviously this was a ticket that was raised and has provided the ticket number. Well done, Bob. Security team has come back and said, yes, we'll get on to it. But you know, the SLA to resolve this ticket is three days. So please wait a bit. Now Bob's getting a little bit frustrated. He's got an urgent task that he wants to try out. So he gets an idea. He's going to give himself access to EC2 because he's got full access to IAM. And he wants to be a little bit clever about it. He doesn't want to attach the necessary permissions to his account. So he goes ahead and creates another account, a UserX account, and decides to grant UserX full administrative privileges. Not very clever. Um, but it does mean that Bob can go ahead and impersonate UserX and access the EC2 service and complete his personal task that he was hoping to achieve. Obviously, Bob has forgotten that everything he does is being recorded in CloudTrail, but that's a discussion for another video. Anyway, the point here being that because of these privileges, Bob has decided and been able to go ahead and circumvent the security policies that are enforced and applied to him. And that's what this particular lecture is all about. And so I would like to introduce you to permission boundaries. Now, let's look at the same example as we did before with a slight variation. Let's assume that we have an IAM policy attached to the developers group that gives Bob access to S3, CloudWatch, EC2, and IAM. So the difference from the last time is that we're now actually saying that the IAM policy is permitting EC2 access. Now, permission boundaries define the maximum permissions that an identity-based policy can grant an IAM entity. An entity's permission boundary allows it to perform only the actions that are allowed by both the identity-based policy, which is the developer's policy being applied to Bob, as well as its permission boundaries, which I'm going to talk about next. Let's take a look at a typical permission boundary that we could apply to Bob to restrict the level of access that he can have. So here's a permission boundary that is being applied to Bob. In this particular policy, we have said that Bob is allowed to use S3, CloudWatch, and IAM. There's no mention of EC2 there. And so ultimately, what this means is that Bob will not be able to access the Amazon EC2 service because in order for Bob to be able to access Amazon EC2, both the permission boundary and the IAM policy need to be aligned. Permission boundaries basically define the maximum level of permission that an IAM user or role can have. However, you still need IAM policies to define what those permissions are. And so in this Venn diagram over here, we've got permission boundaries that are allowing permissions A, B, C, and D, whereas the IAM policies is only allowing permissions B, C, D, and E. Now, as I mentioned just a few seconds ago, 
Both the permission boundaries and the IAM policies need to be aligned. In other words, any user or role affected by this permission boundary and this set of IAM policies will only be able to use the permissions as defined in permissions B, C, and D. Okay, permissions A will not be applicable to that user or role because it's not in the IAM policy and permission E will not be applicable to that user or role because it's not as part of the permission boundary. This is really, really critical. And it's one that you really want to remember if you're planning on taking the SAA C03 exam, the Solutions Architect exam. Ultimately, with both the IAM policy and the permission boundaries being defined for Bob, Bob cannot access the EC2 service. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, doesn't Bob already have full IAM access? So he can do exactly what he did before. He can create a brand new account, give it full administrative rights, impersonate that account and go and access EC2. Absolutely. Which is why when you're defining permission boundaries, you need to be a little bit more specific than this sort of generalized policy that's being defined over here. I'm gonna show you a set of permission boundaries that will ensure that Bob even though he can create other user accounts, he cannot give those user accounts any more privileges than what he himself has. He will also be forced to ensure that a set of permission boundaries are applied to every IAM account that he creates. And how you define your permission boundaries is gonna be critical in this case. So let's talk about that next by looking at a design scenario for both Bob and Alice. And so here's a example policy that you could use when you're building your permission boundaries. Now, this policy example is available to you in our resources section of this course, as well as in our GitHub repository. But I wanted to walk you through some of the core elements of this policy, just to highlight how effective this particular example policy can be. Now, we start off by giving full administrative access to the permission boundaries, but then we go on to start denying specific access to specific resources and the ability to do certain things that would ultimately prevent those loopholes I mentioned earlier. So for instance, as an example, you may wish to deny access to the cost and billing section of your AWS account because obviously you want to ensure that those financial informations are only accessible to certain individuals in your organization. But more importantly, I want to show you this particular statement. Deny permission boundary IAM policy alteration. One of the loopholes with regards to policies on AWS is the ability to change the policy version and to apply that newer version as a default policy. Now, this particular statement prevents that from happening by setting the deny statement against those actions. In other words, a user cannot update an existing policy with a new policy version, make changes that would give elevated privileges and apply that policy as the default. This particular deny statement would prevent that loophole. Another statement that I want you to watch out for is the deny removal of permission boundary from any user or role. So this prevents anyone from removing that permission boundary that has been applied to that user or role. And perhaps even more interesting is this one over here. Deny user and role creation without permission boundary, specifically the permission boundary that this policy is in. So what this means is that if Bob were to go ahead and create new users, he wouldn't be able to create those users without applying this permission boundary to those users. He would be prevented from doing that. And this is, you know, a key cornerstone statement within this policy document. Obviously, there's some other statements there that you're welcome to review. For instance, we want to ensure that Bob cannot access the EC2 service, regardless of the fact that his IAM policy attached to the developer groups allows him to. Okay, so that is in there as well. But you're welcome to amend this policy document to suit your specific needs as required by your business. Okay, now that you've seen the policy document, let's go ahead into the AWS Management Console and demonstrate how this all works. Okay, so here we are in my AWS Management account. I'm currently in the IAM dashboard and I already have a user created called Bob. Now you need to create a user called Bob and basically ensure that he has full administrative access for the purposes of this lab. Currently, there are no permission boundaries set for Bob, so we're gonna do that next. Let me just bring up the permission boundary that we're gonna use. Okay, and there we are. This is the scope boundary.json document that's included in the resources section of this course and in our GitHub repository that you can use for the purposes of this lab. You can also amend it to suit your needs. But I'm just gonna copy all of that and create a policy document for the permission boundary. 
Okay, here we are back in my AWS Management Console. You click on Policies, click Create Policy, click the JSON tab, and let's just paste it in there. And what do you need to do with this particular policy example is change the account ID to reflect your AWS account. So I'm just going to grab a copy of my account ID there and make those changes. Just making those changes in our policy document. Okay, click next for tags and next to review and you need to give it a policy name. You need to make sure that the policy name matches with the name that you're using in the policy document. So that's called scope permissions. Okay, and then click create policy. Now that we have the policy created, we need to attach it to Bob. So let's just go and see our user Bob again. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this policy the scope permissions policy as the permission boundary. So scope, there it is. Click set boundary. And now Bob has the permission boundary scope permissions applied to his account. Great. Next, what we need to do is to log in as Bob and do a few tests. Let's, so let's do that next. Okay, so to log in as Bob, we're obviously going to log in as an IAM user rather than the root user. So we need to make a note of the account ID for this particular AWS account. I'm just going to copy that in my clipboard and then sign out. And then we'll log back in as Bob. So let's log back in. IAM user, paste in the account ID. There we are. Click next. And then let's log in as Bob. And there we are, we're logging in as Bob. So we know that there are certain configurations we've put in place as the permission boundaries for Bob. Now, if you remember this, one of them was the ability or rather the inability to access the billing dashboard. Let's just check that out first. Okay, so there it is, you need permissions. We cannot access the billing dashboard, which is fantastic. So obviously our policy boundary is working, even though, you know, Bob has a number of different access permissions. Let's take a look at another example. Let's create a new user in IAM. And I'll just go to users and I'll click add a user. And let's go ahead and create an user called Alice. Okay, so Alice, for the purposes of this lab, I'm just gonna do console-based access, choose a password, untick this box that says change password as, as next login, click permissions. And what we wanna do is we wanna give some real elevator privileges, right? We wanna give the administrator access to Alice. So click next again, and click next for review, and click create user. As you can see, we're not able to create the user. We're not able to create the user because there's a permission boundary attached to Bob that says that every time you create a new user, you have to attach that same permission boundary to your new users. So let's just go previous, go previous, scroll all the way to the bottom and click set permission boundary. And if you remember the name of the permission boundary was scope permissions. So just do a quick search there. There it is. So that's the permission boundary. Next, next review, click create user. And there we are, we've successfully created Alice. So we can close that now. And so hopefully you're beginning to realize that Alice, now obviously she has administrative privileges, but she's also bound by the scope permissions, which denies several levels of access. So if we actually look at the JSON, it's going to deny access to the costing and billing. It's going to prevent her from, you know, removing the permission boundary against the user account. It's going to deny alteration to the permission boundary scope permissions. And it's also going to prevent her from creating new user accounts without applying the same permission. Okay, so if we scroll down, here a little bit, deny user and role creation without permission boundary. The same restriction that Bob had, right? So Bob wasn't able to create the user Alice without 
being forced to apply the same permission boundary. And so hopefully now you're beginning to realize that we have created a permission boundary that ensures that however many users Bob creates, those same restrictions will be applied to those users. Bob can add additional permissions and additional policies as you know he sees fit. However, he is still restricted by the permission boundary. Designing your permission boundary carefully is really critical to ensure that you prevent anyone from circumventing any loopholes within the system. And so this is one that you definitely want to remember for the exam and for real world use cases. Right, that pretty much brings me to the end of this lecture. I hope you enjoyed the demonstration. Join me in the next video. Thank you.